Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here. Uh, I understand this is to be my six-minute final rebuttal, after which the vivisectionist will give a three-minute closing statement, and then you will vote probably on his last video. Well, he hasn't really upheld the Palestinian cause, but he has shown his ignorance of the historical facts of the situation. Uh, the 40 million Arabs were threatening to attack if the United Nations declared Jerusalem a, a nation, and it did, and the Arabs attacked. And the Jews knew it was coming, and they, this is the funniest thing about it. Uh, this is a big lesson to learn, ladies and gentlemen, big lesson here. Nobody would sell the Jews weapons, because there's all these Arabs, white people have been over there messing around for a long time, but now there's oil there. We all know about oil, and oil's important. And so here's oil, here's the Arabs we've been dealing with a long time, they're touchy, they're iffy. We kind of want to be on their side, because there's Russia, it's the Cold War. They believe in God, we believe in God. The, the Cold War Russian bastards don't believe in God, so we kind of feel affinity to the Muslims. No one will help the Jews. Um, they actually ended up buying uh, some jets from Czechoslovakia to defend their nation. They built ice cream trucks into armored vehicles. Uh, they did everything they could, and about 1% of them were killed in the 1967 war, but they took land. So it, 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 it's amazing that uh, here the Egyptians had been given British Harrier jets. And uh, a British and American equipment was all over the Middle East. And this was used to attack the Israelis, who won nonetheless. Nonetheless, they won. Even though they had inferior equipment, and they were begging America to sell them the spare parts for the jets that they had. America said, here's the problem. You come from a sorry people with a sorry history, and we don't want to touch the controversy. It wasn't until after 1967 when they showed that with no help from anybody at all, except private donations from individuals around the world, with no help, they could defend and hold two or three million people against 40 million. And we decided that's an ally. That's worth having as an ally. That's a stable spot in the Middle East right there. Or at least ways if we ship a billion dollars a year into it in arms, it will be stable. You know, if they can defend themselves already, we ought to be on their side. Now, that was the one consideration, but today it's very obvious. I've never been to Israel, but I've heard uh, people talk about going to Israel. And the nightclubs you go to, and girls in skirts way up where, beyond where it's decent, and uh, drugs being passed around, and different things like this. And the Palestinian side where the Israelis recently announcing that they're going to pull back and leave a bunch of the West Bank to the Palestinians. Uh, they're going to depopulate some of their um, settlements and so on. The Israelis have decided um, that they're going to take their businesses, their infrastructure and everything. Palestinians said, God damn it, you can't do that. You have no right to do that. Who's going to generate the electricity? I mean, how stupid does that sound? That's the kind of society the Palestinians have. The vivisectionist cluelessly says, well, I'm sure there's a Bill of Rights for the Palestinians and a Bill of Rights for the Israelis. He says, I have no idea what you're talking about, Mr. Cropper. At 3 minutes and 39 seconds, he says, Mr. Cropper, I just don't know what you're talking about. Referring to this question of the difference between rights in Palestine and rights in Israel. Well, it turns out if you're the wrong type of Muslim, you don't have a right to pray in Palestine. And Jews certainly do not have the same rights as Muslims in Palestine. And Palestinians don't have many rights in Palestine. But in Israel, everybody, even the terrorists have rights. A terrorist who uh, has been injured in his own attack is brought to a hospital in Israel, and they repair him. Um, I, I hope that's not 100% true. I hope sometimes they let them die. I hope sometimes there are police uh, site executions where they get there and the terrorist is still alive and they shoot him. I hope so. But I have a little bit too much faith, maybe, in the extra-civilized nature of their respect for individual rights and that every life is valuable. 
an idea that comes to the Greeks and filters through Christianity to us. That is what Israel has. You can tell walking down the streets in their cities and towns the difference between Israel and not just Palestine, but any other nation in the Middle East. You can tell the difference between Israel which has a bigger economy than every single country from Morocco to Egypt put together, Israel has a different view of individual rights. It's true. Vivisectionist is absolutely clueless. Now before we stop here, I just want to address one last thing. He says, uh, he, he counters my point where I said, I'm in favor of individual self-determination, not the self-determination of nations, going back to Wilson's World War I speech. Well, he says everyone's in favor of individual self-determination, but I don't think he is. He wants the Palestinians to have their own state, and they briefly and quickly elect terrorists to the head of their state when they have elections. And they do not care for the rights of everyone, just the rights of Muslims. Everyone else can be a subhuman. That's the view that they take, and vivisectionists is clearly unaware of this. This is obviously not something that CNN trumpets on their news. They, they might trumpet the Palestinian cause and the BBC and the CBC. Trumpet the Palestinian cause, but not the Palestinian way of life. Not the difference between Palestine and Israel. They may brag that Palestine has a hundred times as many deaths in the, the clashes between them and Israel. But they don't brag that Palestine has a hundred times as many political prisoners or political executions or political problems of that nature, of violent nature, uh, than Israel. In fact, Israel has zero. To the extent that Israel has problems politically, it's with the Palestinians. And I don't think they should give any of the land back. I think they should take more of the land, and I don't think they should give any rights to the Palestinians beyond what they give to every Israeli citizen already, which is a lot more rights than the Palestinians have. So, he says everyone's in favor of the self-determination of individuals. That's the Palestinians. Everyone's in favor, in favor of the self-determination of countries, he says, because I'm in favor of the self-determination of Israel. America. Well, he skips, he's skipping the point. Just because I think Israel and America have the right to determine what they do doesn't mean I'm in favor of that as such, as of a country being able to do what it wants. I think America and Israel should be able to do what they want because within their borders is a nest of individual rights, of freedom, and productivity, and civilization. And so they should be allowed to do what they want. They should be able to spread their system as far and wide as they please. Other countries that don't have that system have no right to act and are subject legally to invasion at any time. I urge you to vote the negative against his resolution to affirm the Palestinian cause. And I rest my case.